Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. What do we have from Spardella Arms? Continuing the tradition. The tradition of excellence, the tradition of making a high quality custom 1911 the proper way, where everything is finely tuned. It's very, very nice to be able to get that. Let's take a look at the box. It is a model full stroke commander. Serial number 57, caliber is 45 ACP. They ship with two Cobra mags. I think that's worth noting because they are a little bit expensive and they are fine quality. Young Brett and I agree we have experience with those magazines too and they are pretty outstanding. A Spardella Arms Custom Commander. This has been in development for a year. It is absolutely fantastic. And I can compare it to all of the customs that I own. And I own several commanders too. So I'm comparing my full size to everything from Les Bear to Alchemy Arms to Cabot Arms to Wilson Combat and to Nighthawk. You can order it pretty much however you want it. I like the high gloss bluing, that finish. I think it looks fantastic. I'm gonna show you what came stock, a high quality wood grip. And a lot of people like just wood grips on their 1911s. I get it. And it's absolutely fabulous if you wanna go this way. And that's who makes that. I like to show everything so you guys have a real good idea of what's going on here and what we're doing. So we just stuck these Hogue wood grips in the lock grips bag and I'm keeping that in the box. Bardella Custom Full Stroke is sporting these aluminum alloy grips, which if you look at it, every little box, if you will, is textured. The attention to detail is fantastic. And the price is less than what Young Beretta said in the dedicated video about these grips. These are actually going for like $89 right now. These are lifelong grips right here. Very light and they feel fantastic in the hand. So the bluing on this gun is tremendous. Let me see if I can get a rag because I can see I'm already putting prints on it. Let's talk about the magazines. You get two of them, Cobra mags. Eight round, 1911 magazines, 45 ACP. Again, a very good, high quality magazine. That's good to know. This Spardella 1911 Commander. This gun is properly tuned. There's no question about it. It is a custom made 1911 that has almost 50 hours of hand fitting and hand tuning by a master gunsmith putting these pistols together. The high gloss bluing finish harkens back late 1960s, 1970s, where the bluing actually looked fantastic. And that's the way this pistol looks too. This pistol out the gate is for self-defense or duty or professional use. It is not meant to be a safe queen or just about looks. This is a hard use, you know, go to war type 1911. I would not question that at all. You always want to check out your break-in period. Make sure you're running the ammo that you're going to be running for self-defense. Make sure that runs through the guns too without any problems. But that's my experience with my first Spardella 1911. I have carried it as my EDC pistol for almost a year now. So it's been for quite a while. And I obviously I trust my life and, and protecting my family with it. So I have very, very high praise for the gun itself. This particular 1911 has a Stan Chin one piece mainspring housing magwell. Again, look at the finish on even that. Beautiful, beautifully done. I told Young Beretta when I was looking at this thing the first time, I said, dude, this is like the absolute top of the line Wilson Combat 1911s. This thing is just impeccable. We talked about the blue grips here. They are the gridlock thin palm swell lock grips. So you have a palm swell. If you can catch that in this 4K camera, there's a little bit of a palm swell there as your hand gets around the grip. It's very comfortable. So it's a nice finish to a perfect package here for a self-defense type pistol. 1911 in 45 ACP. Absolutely gorgeous. You notice they don't have their names or anything written on it anymore. It's an all business look to it. It does have a gold bead front sight. The top of the slide is serrated to cut down on glare and whatnot. Everything is match grade on it. It is a cart national match bushing and barrel. No corners were cut. The back of the slide is done. Let's see if I can get some light here. Can you pick up on that? There you go. Very finely done. The attention to detail on this pistol is fantastic.
This pistol also came with a $150 upgrade of the ball cuts. So there they are right there. If you like ball cuts on your 1911, this commander has it. Overall, this pistol runs about five racks. So if you're looking at this one exactly the way it's outfitted, it's right around $5,000. We talked about the top serrations being done. They are done at 40 LPI. So 40 lines per inch up on the top. The fully serrated rear of the slide and the ejector is very well done on the left side here, as is the extractor. You almost can't even tell it's there. So the ejector and the extractor are just perfectly done. This pistol comes with a flat wire recoil spring and a full length guide rod. So there's the full length guide rod and the flat recoil spring of course is hidden inside. The entire pistol is finished in high polished blue which is a $1,200 upgrade if you're interested in doing it. He doesn't do it to a lot of them so you'd have to special order it that way. Very very nice custom 1911. Doesn't really get much better than that. I own quite a few and it really doesn't get much better than that guys. I think we have reached the top. I said that to young Brett earlier today and he's like, do you really think so? And I said, I think so. I would put this thing up against anything that I own and I own quite a few. So if you're lucky enough to uh, pick one of these up and get it outfitted, however you want to get it outfitted, wait for it to be built for you, give you a chance to save up some money to pay for it when it comes in. I highly encourage you to consider that. Again, this will be our second one. First one has been absolutely fabulous as my EDC. This obviously is a very logical step for me to step to this as an EDC in either the second half of 2023 or maybe the whole year of 2024. But let's get it to the range a few times and let's make sure that we're good there. Was this the one we took down? No, no, no. We took this one down in a video. And the uh, relationship between the match grade bushing and the match grade great barrel it's very tight i mean this whole thing is very tightly put together so it's not something you want to run into to take them apart i've always wondered why people do that they feel like they have to i don't see the need to do that especially when you're talking about a hand-built 1911 be it a less bear or a spardella arms or a wilson combat which are three of my favorites Guys, put some oil on them. Make sure that obviously there's nothing in the barrel that's going to cause any problems with shooting the gun. And then take it and put three, four, or 500 rounds to it. Les Bear doesn't want you taking apart his Les Bears until they have over 700 rounds. So what makes that, you know, more capable or easier to be serviced at 700 rounds than this? I'm telling you, these will run six, 700 rounds, no problem whatsoever. Then you take them apart, clean them up, and put them back together. You're going to have a hell of a time taking them apart if you don't give them some break-in uh, rounds first. Just my opinion, putting it out there, put some oil on it. I'm not saying don't oil it. You can lock it back and check the barrel and all that kind of stuff. You can run a couple of things down it if you want to, if that makes you feel better, but add some oil to it and then take it to the range and have some fun and enjoy your custom 1911. Once you have six, seven, 800 rounds to it, then go ahead and take it down and give it a good cleaning. And then again, add some oil to it before you put it back together and you're good to go. I haven't had any problems with the way that I treat my 1911s. They've run very, very well. The ones that haven't run well, sometimes, you know, there's nothing you can do except for send it back to the manufacturer. So hopefully you've got one that uh, has a good uh, warranty and will take care of you just in case that happens to you. On this upper end, this top shelf stuff, this one has been absolutely fantastic and I don't expect anything different from this. So this is the red lock grips. These are the blue, and these are both the aluminum anodized type of grips, and they both feel fantastic in the hand. So if you guys are wondering about that at all, again, $89 for these, so 89 bucks. It's a buy once and you're done type thing, because I don't think you'll want to change them out after you experience what they're like. This commander comes with an ambi safety, so over here for lefties and for righties. Let's go ahead and see how it sounds. got some resistance to it and then it snaps into place god that feels so good in the hand the front strap is done at 30 lines per inch and the back is also done it's all part of that one piece stanchion magwell super high quality all forged parts no mem no cast let's go ahead and cover the trigger on this spardella full stroke commander Two pounds, 14 ounces. Let's 
talk about the trigger itself. I'm gonna say about an eighth of an inch of take up right here. It seems to be a little bit less than a quarter. See that? Okay, now we're on it. We already know it's under three pounds. Let's see if there's any movement before it snaps. I'm just slowly putting a little bit of pressure on it and it is gonna just break. Even when it broke, did you see it barely moved? <laughs> there's the take up on an excellent, excellent trigger. You're on it. Two pounds, 14 ounces later. See if it moves. It just snaps like glass. Fantastic job, guys. The Beavertail Grip Safety. Let's see if it's tuned. And this is one that many custom 1911s don't seem to be able to get right. Cabot Arms, Alchemy Arms. And I own those guns, so I should know what I'm talking about. So what you're gonna do is put a little bit of pressure on the trigger and then you're gonna slowly press in your grip safety to see how far in it needs to go before it sticks releasing the trigger and making it capable for the trigger to release the hammer. And that's it right there. It's not even 50% and it stopped. Now, without pulling the trigger all the way, I'm gonna show you if I press in on this grip safety all the way, how far it's gonna go. Ready? That's a lot. That means it is a very tuned grip safety. As far as the grip safety is concerned to where the trigger will allow you to break the hammer like that. Notice I didn't touch the grip safety anymore. One more time, because I think it's important. Hammer back. It's a two pound, 14 ounce trigger. So keep that in mind. So you can't give it too much juice up here, right? You're just gonna give it enough that you're putting some kind of pressure against it as you're slowly pressing this grip safety to see if it's tuned or not. And as you press it in, it'll get to the point where it will just stick right there, 30%. And what's keeping it there? I've got light pressure going on right here. As soon as I push this pressure, two pounds and 14 ounces on the trigger, the hammer is going to release from this wonderful trigger right here. I'm not gonna to touch this again. That's how you test it. That's how you check it. And what does that mean? The bottom line is it makes a finely tuned 1911 easier to use in the field for self-defense, for government work, for uh, county work, you know, wherever you may work that allows you. I know down in the South, they still allow 1911s to be carried on duty. Here in Oregon, it's Glocks on duty and it's 1911s off duty. But still, you want the gun to be properly tuned. That way, if you ever have to use it, so here we are, safety on, no matter how you grab it real fast, because you may not get a perfect grab on that, but you want to make sure that it at least activates your grip safety so you can bring it up and sweep the safety off. You're going to engage the bad guy. And even with a grip that's really kind of terrible, if you've got some pressure on this grip safety right here, it's going to allow you to engage the bad guy and put rounds on them. If you have a Cabot, 1911 or some other type of 1911, mine's a Cabot, it has to be in 90% of the way where it just barely has a little bit of movement left on it to get the engagement of the safety so you can put rounds on target. And we'll show you that. I have the guns, so we'll show it to you at some point in time. This is what you want. This is a properly tuned grip safety, which enacts the trigger, which releases the hammer and puts rounds on the bad guy. If you want a 1911, you want to check that. And guys, we have Springfield Armories and uh, what else did we look at recently? Springfield Armory and something else. It might have been a uh, double star that had a nicely tuned grip safety as far as like being in 50% of the way and you can actuate everything and make everything work correctly. And that comes from a properly tuned grip safety. And then you've got a wonderfully tuned trigger and just a great custom 1911 in this case. So one last huge advantage of the full stroke here over the traditional CCOs or even the commander versions. If you're a guy who's kind of old school and you run your gun dry like this, you make your magazine change. Maybe you're not one of the guys that comes up here and hits the slide release and releases the slide to pick up the next round and load the gun. Maybe you're one of those guys that reaches over the top like I did for the longest time and released it that way. You can do that on this gun. There are quite a few guns out there that you cannot do that with. So know your gun, know your capabilities, know what it's capable of doing and what it's not capable of doing. Because if you get it home and then you don't like it, i.e. me and my Les Bear commander, or they called it something else and I'm drawing a blank. But anyway, uh, the Les Bears are not built that way. So that's why you probably heard us say many, many times, we love our Les Bear full size 
1911s and we own 10 or 11 of them so that is the best gun that Les Bear makes in my opinion with Spardella arms you have your choice between the excellent government size or the excellent commander size or CCO they all operate from a very very high standard and they're capable of doing anything you want them to do they're not restricted to the use of releasing a slide via just the slide release in the middle of a battle or in the middle of defending your life or your family guys you may not remember that you may go to the old school method which is you know the over the top the slingshot whatever neither one of those are going to be able to be done on some of those commanders and CCO pistols so make sure that you check yours out. See if it works that way. That's why I sold that is the only Les Bear 1911 that I have ever sold. Because I'm used to however I want to release the slide on a loaded magazine. Every once in a while I will use the slide release. But a lot of times I'll either slingshot it or I'll overhand method and try to load the pistol. And you could try it over and over again. We had a video up on it. I don't know if we still have a video on it or not. But uh, we showed it and talked about it and said this is the reason why I'm trading it in. And... So it's gone. If you're gonna keep the best, find what the best is, and then keep those guns. In retirement, I'm gonna be selling some things. It won't be these two. These are some of the best 1911s on the planet. I am looking forward to testing this one a lot and getting back to you on that. So let's just make sure that this thing runs like this one does. And if it does, you could stop right here. I want a full size, I want a commander. Sell everything else. <laughs> Anyway, that's kind of where I'm at. I'm going to be going through some of that myself. It's time to start uh, figuring out what the best is, keep the best, and get rid of the rest. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel here on YouTube, the Beretta 9mm USA channel, and the CZ 9mm USA channel. Both are gun channels. Both are here for your enjoyment. You're all welcome to both channels. I am trying to grow the CZ 9mm USA channel to 10,000 subscribers. My goal is by the end of this year, I may or may not hit that, but if you help me, I should be able to hit that. We also run, I run anyway, a tool channel called the Legion of Tools and you're all invited to that. We love treating you guys with a great deal of respect. I try to be there for you for the first couple days as far as uh, answering questions or communicating back and forth with you in the comments section. I do enjoy that too. We'll see you guys on the next video and remember your second amendment is worth protecting.